management and high availability facilities that are uh, key to managing large data sets in general. And the uh, performance, uh, well, it speaks for itself. We get the data out, we get the answers back uh, faster, much faster. Only MapR extends Hadoop beyond batch to support real-time applications and streaming data. So I see MapR as the perfect Hadoop distribution for the enterprise. The MapR enterprise-grade Hadoop distribution is now available as an Amazon cloud service. Customers can run MapR exclusively in the cloud or augment existing on-premise deployments with cloud clusters for additional capacity for disaster recovery needs. When it comes to big data, MapR is the answer. We're back here at Hadoop Summit 2012. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconAngle.com. I'm joined with my co-host for this segment is Jeff Kelly, the lead analyst at Wikibon.org on big data, the best big data analyst on the planet. Obviously Dave Vellante can't be here, Jeff, so you're going to sub in for his, his spot. Uh, I'm, I'm playing Dave today. That's I'm super excited to be cool. here because one, I love this ecosystem of Hadoop and it's just a lot of the friendly faces that we've seen over the years and our next guest, Doug Cutting, is one of those friendly faces uh, from my time when I was sitting in the Hadoop office, uh, Cloudera office, or Hadoop office, the Cloudera office, where Doug would come in a couple times a week. Doug, welcome back to theCUBE. Thanks John, good to be here. You've been on many times. Uh, you're the founder, inventor, co-founder, inventor of Hadoop as you're being known as a celebrity. I knew you when you were just a cloud, you know. When I was just a little, yeah, <laughs> I knew boy. you when. <laughs> um, you're very humble. I know you, you take it with grace and you're very considerate to a lot of folks who want your autograph uh, and as, we, as the ecosystem grows up. But uh, you know, you've been a big part of this whole citizenship model of, of open source. We've talked many times on interviews with this. I wanted to get your perspective on the future of Hadoop. Um, you've been involved from the beginning. You're in the community, you're at Cloudera. We just had the CEO of Wartonworks on. Um, very friendly uh, collaboration, which is great to see that that didn't go Cold War, it went yeah. collaborative. Um, what's, what's going on? I mean, what's your view right now of Hadoop as it is, and where is it going? We're, I mean, we're seeing tremendous growth. We're seeing um, industry after industry start to um, realize that this is a, a, a way that they can improve their businesses. That they have uh, data that's um, passing through their hands uh, that they can benefit from uh, if they could uh, get a handle on it, if they could save it and, and analyze it uh, effectively, um, and that Hadoop can can help them with that, can provide them the tools. Um, so it's it's pretty exciting to see that, uh, and the you know the predictions, the projections are are huge. Um, uh, I think it's it's our job as as members of the community, as uh, you know the, the open source software community, as well as as vendors, um, to fulfill that promise. Uh, it, it's you know we need to. Can you talk about some of the dynamics going on right now? Because obviously, the environment's changed. All the usual suspects are around the table. We talked to Todd at the HBase conference, Todd Lipcon, he's a contributor. A lot of people still there, good, good folks. No, there's no bad politics going on uh, that's worthy of reporting. But what's going on in the dynamics as the ecosystem's growing, more people want to be involved. What is some of the dynamics in the Apache community right now? I, I think there's so much to be done um, that the only way to really do it effectively is to collaborate. Um, uh, you know, you, you could think about uh, trying to compete, trying to get a, a larger piece of the pie, um, but I think everybody's really rightly focused on growing the pie um, and not, not trying to steal chunks from, from your neighbor, um, uh, not looking back, but looking There's forward. plenty of beachhead to, yeah. to camp out on, right? Yep. I mean, yep. there's a big range of yep. beachhead. Yep, and, uh, and that's, just, that's just a more productive thing. Uh, what so, areas you know, are you We listen to, our, listen to what our customers want and try to make sure that we're, we're making them happy. 
uh, and, and not, not look to, to competitors. What areas do you see right now as the future of Hadoop is evolving where you have, we just talked with Rob about some of the challenges. Mm -hmm. You know, infrastructure's hard to do, you got a lot of cloud, you got, you know, solid state driving the changing the equation on the economics on storage, latency, uh, batch to real time, near real time's going very rapidly, high availability, ton of infrastructure stuff, virtualization, you name it, there's a laundry list of things to do, as you mentioned. And then you got the business benefits of analytics, mm -hmm. okay? Tremendous business value on the app side. Where's the action right now, and just tell the folks out there who are jumping mm -hmm. into the ecosystem, where to pick up a weapon or a shovel and get start digging. I mean, it's, yeah, I think it's really across the board. I mean, the, the basic platform, uh, we're, we're adding, adding new, um, uh, you know, really needed features, the, the high availability stuff um, uh, makes the, um, uh, the real-time nature of HBase, uh, uh, you know, as, as, an, as an online store, um, uh, useful. If you, if you can no, rely on it being up 24-7, um, uh, and, and now you can um, uh, with, the, with the current releases. Um, uh, so from, from those real you know, fundamental um, uh, core layers, there's a still a lot of um, fit and finish work at the, out, at the outside, making it really easy to incorporate new data sets, to visualize results, um, uh, to deploy and monitor uh, the, these, these clusters. Um, all these things uh, need, need, need a lot of work. I mean, it's a young technology still, um, and uh, it's, it's getting more mature. It's a lot more mature than it was a couple years ago when the first time we, we talked. Yeah. Um, uh, but uh, it's, uh, it's still got a ways to go. So, um, so you know, including you know, starting to see verticals. Um, so. so obviously you're a laid back guy. We talked in the past. We know you're out in the wine country these days a lot and you got a great, great life out there. But you work hard. You're a hard worker. I, I've been you know, living <laughs> uh, up north. <laughs> Uh, for the entire duration of this project, yeah. so it's not like it's, a, <laughs> it's not, not like, like I'm retired. No, I know, but uh, it's a good life. It's a great place, by the way. If you could do, I get a, it's great. I just, it's my. I live in my hometown where yeah. I grew up, yeah. and I enjoy working from home. Works for me. So, um, and so you actually work for a leader, Cloudera, which you know was at the time the first commercial uh, company, to, and they got a huge lead. And I talked to Mike Olson. I was talking with Ping Lee at Excel. Right. And Cloudera has just done such great work, and they're so ahead of the competition in terms of talking to customers. There, I mean, the employees are now over 200, it's like huge. 250. It's growing like crazy, yeah. um, and business is good. But they're out there talking to customers. How much time do you spend talking with um, customers out there? I mean, you know, Cloudera is actively uh, engaging with a lot of the federal, financial, and all the big verticals. How much time do you spend with customers, and, and, and what are you hearing? Um, you know, that's a, a decent component of my time to spend out in the field uh, talking to folks. Um, uh, and what, you know, what I hear is that they're they're loving the stuff mostly. Um, they want to learn more. Um, uh, some of them are at fairly advanced stages. More of them are just getting started, getting their toes wet. They're they're doing experiments and and they like what they see. Um, uh, and the sort of problems we hear, the kind of you know areas we're, we're addressing, which is uh, integration with existing systems, um, uh, addressing security concerns, um, uh, addressing reliability concerns, uh, and really really you know nailing all those. Uh, it's, it's what we're, we're focusing on. Do you think on. Uh, Hadoop will be a primary data warehouse um, in many organizations in the future? Uh, in the future? Or yes, soon? I mean, I think, it, I think it's becoming a primary repository um, uh, for um, uh, bulk data of all sorts um, and, a, and a home for analysis of that data. Um, and over time, becoming an, uh, an online database um, where that, that data can be um, searched and accessed from. I, I mean, I think we're, we're seeing better and better tools um, in that sort of online access, and I think we'll see that as, a, as an ongoing direction. Right now, you're doing hive queries that you know it can take uh, minutes or, or longer to run things, um, and obviously we'd like to address that as an ecosystem. We had a great time at the HBase conference that the Cloud Air put on. HBase Con was great. All the alpha geeks were there talking about HBase, and Facebook gave a great presentation about in production HBase. And last night on the plane coming back from New York, I tweeted. Um, HDFS, MapReduce, and HBase is the holy trinity of big data. <laughs> okay, and a little religious yeah. uh, twist on that being the Catholic <laughs> that I am. Bad Catholic, I should say. Um, do you agree that those three are really a nice combination? Because HBase is evolving very rapidly as a database of choice in the unstructured side within that holy trinity, as I call it. Um, and for the folks out there who are trying to grok between HBase, Mongo, all the different approaches, on the unstructured database side. Why is HBase such a nice balance between HDFS and, and MapReduce? I mean, I think the, the key advantage of HBase, uh, there's, a, there's a number of distinctions between it and other, um, uh, you know, uh, quote unquote, no SQL uh, data stores. Um, but I think the key advantage of HBase is just this degree of integration with the rest of the Hadoop ecosystem. Um, that it uh, co-resides uh, in, in HDFS, um, allows for lots of opportunities 
um, for better interaction with MapReduce, better interaction with HDFS, um, you know, same security model. Um, uh, you know, a lot of these things just, just work out more easily and it's more seamless. Um, and I, I think that's what, what makes it uh, a success um, in this ecosystem. I mean, nothing, there's nothing wrong with um, the other solutions out there. Um, they're just less well integrated. Uh, so they're, they're, they're going to have a harder time uh, living uh, alongside HDFS and MapReduce. Um, so um, uh, I, I think that's, that's something I look for when um, we're sort of tr trying to figure out what are the next major components to, to join the ecosystem, uh, is how well can they integrate with what's there already. Um, uh, because you, know, you want to make things seamless, you want to make moving from one tool to another as easy as possible. You don't want to have to be importing and exporting your data, you want to be able to access it natively um, uh, in, from one tool to another. Uh, so that's the, that's the direction I think we really ought to be pushing the, the ecosystem. Uh, you know, so John, you know, the previous question was about, do you see Hadoop kind of evolving into kind of the data warehouse of the future where it'll live as the main repository for data inside an organization. So what is your take on integrating Hadoop within existing environments? Are you, is it a situation where, you know, we see a lot of connectors being built and every uh, database vendor kind of has a connector now to Hadoop. Um, so is that not a, lo a long-term viable, do you think, uh, strategy for, for, for a data management uh, strategy? Um, and do you see Hadoop kind of uh, subsuming kind of the relational data world and kind of incorporating structured data a little bit more into the into the Hadoop platform? Um, yes, uh, I mean, I think um, uh, connectors are definitely a short-term strategy. Mm -hmm. um, uh, they're, they're a great way to go. I think there's a degree to which they're a long-term strategy. There, there are certain applications which are going to be around for a long time, which are, aren't going to live in Hadoop. Um, uh, but I think there's also probably a number of things which aren't great fits in the current infrastructure they're in, um, where Hadoop would provide a, either a, a more economical or more scalable um, uh, solution, um, uh, or, and will will provide that. It may or may not today, mm -hmm. and we'll see migration of applications um, uh, wholesale over. But that takes time. I mean, you've got a, you, you know, you've got a lot of investment in using a particular piece of, of infrastructure, um, uh, moving over to another one. But <coughs> companies do revisit things. Mm -hmm. um, things do evolve. Um, so I think over time we'll start to see more things get replaced uh, with Hadoop-based solutions. What um, are some examples of those applications? Uh, you, kinda, you mentioned some that are not maybe a great fit and some that are. What are, what are some of the, the applications or use cases that you see uh, you know, gradually kind of uh, making their way to the Hadoop ecosystem? Well, today I think we're really focused on, um, uh, th there's enough new applications, things which just really don't work mm -hmm. in existing tools, um, uh, and focusing on the connectors. Um, and, uh, and, and moving uh, the, the, um, these new workloads uh, on, onto this new technology. Um, and I think we got our hands full, hands full doing that. Um, uh, you know, longer term, you, we read about uh, Google um, uh, moving all of its uh, advertising uh, data um, into a uh, big data style uh, database mm -hmm. that's able to actually uh, handle all their, all their transactions um, mm -hmm. uh, across a data, uh, distributed global database. And, and I think, um, you know that's a that's an exciting direction. Um, the Hadoop ecosystem's away from that, a ways from that, um, uh, and uh, that's not our immediate concern. There's enough mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, applications today that are that are new where they just don't work in, in mm -hmm. with existing tools um, uh, to to keep us busy for a while. So I mean I do see that as a long-term direction um, uh, for lots of lots of things. It's hard to you know identify particular right. ones, um, uh, but but short-term. Um, we're, we're not focused on that um, as a community. So I got to ask you, we've talked about Avro before, Avro yeah. before, what's the future of that project? Um, talk, talk about the folks, interest sure. in why it was created, sure. and then I'd like to ask you how it differs from protocol buffers. Sure. There's you know, been some conversation between the both in terms yeah. of come once more cumbersome, and what's your, what's your work path? Um, so Avro is a, a serialization format. Sounds pretty sexy, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> That's, uh, we're tech <laughs> athletes, we, you, you know, run the 50 yard dash, <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> um, so um, what it is is it's a it's a format for data for interchange. Um, uh, so you you um, uh, you've got different applications uh, using and, and different systems. You got Pig, you got Hive, you got HBase, you got all these different components, um, and you want to share your data across them. Um, and data can be fairly complex. Um, you know, classic uh, relational database data is is um, got is columns, um, uh, you know, rows and columns uh, with types on those. Um, we tend to see more um, uh, complicated structures than that um, uh, with nested data structures, more, more complicated data structures. So you need to have a way to interchange it. Um, protocol buffers is a solution uh, from Google for something like this. Um, 
Uh, and Avro is a, is a, is a different solution. It's, a, it's, it's got a lot in, it's in a common. It's an Apache project. It's an Apache project. Apache project, just to be clear, yep. yep. Um, uh, and um, uh, so protocol buffers um, uh, has a couple of deficiencies um, that Avro tries to remedy. For one thing, um, there isn't a standard file format to, to contain protocol buffers um, that includes a description of the data um, in, the, in, the, in it. Yeah. Um, so Avro has a self-contained file format where the data is, is, is completely described so you can write data from a Java program, read it from a C program, an entirely different application, and make total sense of it, um, uh, of what was there. Um, so that's, that's one, one layer. The other thing that's different is that the, um, the way that Avro is implemented um, permits you to um, generate new data sets on the fly. Um, so, so let's say you, you've got a um, scripting language uh, and you're, you're composing some sort so of query. So it's transport speed. One of the things you're trying to it's, it's, it's dynamic, the, the schemas can be generated dynamically um, uh, and you can write data sets in new formats easily. It's really written, written this way to, to support um, uh, interactive construction of data sets and reading data sets. You know, so the idea of sort of browsing data sets and saying, oh, I want to run a query over this one um, and being able to immediately do that. Um, you know, not even within seconds, within you know, milliseconds ideally, you should be able to, to start interacting with a data set because it, it should be self-describing. Uh, whereas the, the protocol buffer approach is you need to uh, generate code. You first you need to find the description of the data set, then you need to generate code to read it in whatever language, then you need to compile that code, link that code in, build your program, start it. There's a lot of steps. It's not really this on the fly, just look at the data and start using it. And then moreover, if you want to combine a couple of data sets and generate a new one, uh, the ability to, to do that on the fly. I mean, um, we're geeking out here with, um, with <laughs> sorry, with the invent, no, which is good, <laughs> I don't mind, I mean, but for the audience, let's talk about what this means. Why is Avro important? I wanted to bring it up because, one, we're having the conversation in our communities within Wikibon, Silicon Angle, around some of the hardcore development. Share with the folks why is Avro cool. important? I mean, I think the, um, uh, the, the, the what we want to do is power the, the sort of spreadsheets of the future. Um, uh, you want to think of, um, you know, spreadsheets, um, provide uh, this power to people who aren't programmers um, to do um, some kind of data analysis, to, to do some numerical computation. Um, it's, it's a power tool, um, but it's a power tool that just about anybody can use. Um, and now we've got this big data application and we want to have people be able to dynamically flick things around and, and analyze them. Um, and so we need a da data format that's really designed uh, to, per to support that. Um, how do it comes out of this sort of batch computing yeah. Uh, 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 methodology and it's becoming more and more dynamic. Yeah. Um, so that the traditional and formats. Big, and there's a big focus on real time. Right. And so that the um, traditional formats we've used in Hadoop are really work well when you're doing batch things, um, but not so well when you're trying to do interactive things. And so it's it's really trying to focus on on that of, of having a very dynamic, but also um, giving you this interoperability. Um, uh, Hadoop is originally a very uh, Java focused um, system. Um, I think long term we need to embrace other programming languages. So we need to have a language independent format. Um, uh, so it's, it's trying to attack all those. So tell us, tell the folks out there, Doug, now that you're a big time celebrity um, <laughs> and getting bigger every day, um, and you're tall too as well, <laughs> um, what you're working on, what you're, what you're working on right now, I mean primarily in terms of your focus, and what you're excited about right now. Um, you know, I've got uh, three things that I tend to spend my time on. Uh, I'm uh, I'm the chairman of the Apache Software Foundation, uh, so uh, Cloudera donates my time, uh, you know, roughly a third of my time, um, to um, uh, volunteering at Apache and trying to keep things running smoothly there um, uh, as best I can. Um, uh, I do a lot of um, uh, uh, sort of at work as a spokesman for uh, Cloudera and for Apache, so I spend I spend time out um, on the road talking with folks, um, uh, you know, and if you if you spend a day on the road, there's days on either side preparing and recovering from that. Uh, so it's it that that's a, a big a big time sink uh, to do that work. And then I'm still um, uh, working on code, still still uh, you know still hacking. Which which uh, hack hacking code are you really focused on now? Um, so I focus on Avro. on Avro, trying yeah. to keep that 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 project uh, going uh, and and responsive. Um, and um, you know uh, so uh, do a lot of. Um, reviewing and incorporating uh, uh, contributions from others uh, as, as that community grows, uh, as well as uh, developing things there. I've um, uh, recently been working on a thing, um, trying to build a good uh, column format for Avro um, uh, so that you can uh, query Avro format data uh, much more quickly. 
um, uh, it make, should make a, you know, orders of magnitude difference for, for a lot of cases um, in, the, in the query suite having a column format. Um, beyond that, you know, we'll see where it goes. Um, I, I try to keep my head pretty low in the development uh, community. I, I'm, uh, there's different ways that open source communities can be run. Uh, you know, Linux is very much uh, run uh, in, the, in the benevolent dictatorship model, um, and that's not something that, that I want to do or be. Um, uh, so, you know, I... I, I Versus the Apache collaborative, yeah, social, yeah, good yeah. citizen. Yeah, so, I, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't want to be a leader of the, of the, the Hadoop project. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so, I, I, I'm, I, you know, I, I mostly drift away from, drifted away from day-to-day -day development there. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, you know, long-term, I'll, I'll, I'm hoping to be able to do that with Avro, that it will, that will you know, uh, develop enough community around it, um, uh, that it will become a, a standalone, independent thing supported by, a, you know, a, a, a deep community. Um, uh, so yeah, I uh, I don't want I don't like to you know toot my trumpet too too loudly and uh, and because you know I don't I want that I, I want how to to be something that's independent for me very much. Um, okay. Uh, so so I wonder uh, you know Wiki, we at Wikibon just uh, put out a report around kind of the enterprise readiness of, of Hadoop. So if you could, what are maybe the one or two key um, areas of improvement that you've seen over the last I don't know six months to a year? Uh, around making the system, you know, ready to uptime, uh, security, uh, ease of use. What are the kind of the key barriers? What are the key components you're hearing from customers that hey, we need this to, we need to do to, to tick these boxes before we're comfortable deploying kind of mission critical applications and workflows on it. Uh, what are some of those key issues, and what have uh, you know, Clutter, but also the community at large, what have they been doing to kind of address those? Um, well, I mean, Cloudera's um, uh, been working in uh, in lots of areas, contributing to lots of projects, uh, building um, uh, commercial products uh, to um, help folks run uh, Hadoop in production uh, and make that really uh, seamless and, and smooth and, and easy. Um, uh, the community at large, I think probably the, the largest single thing is the um, high availability mm -hmm. uh, in HDFS. Um, HDFS is, is the most central component of, of the Hadoop ecosystem. Um, in, in a lot of ways, um, uh, the degree to which something interoperates with HFS is the degree to which it's a member of, of the ecosystem, mm -hmm. <laughs> I'd argue. Um, uh, so um, having that be, um, uh, have automatic failover, uh, mm -hmm. when for, you know, have, having, having there be no single point of failure is a big advance. Um, mm -hmm. it, it really changes the whole nature of the ecosystem because it is, it is the centerpiece and that's a, that's a pretty fundamental feature um, that enables all sorts of um, uh, you know, online applications mm -hmm. um, as opposed to more more batch style. Um, so I'd say that's the biggest single advance uh, that we've seen recently. Um, uh, you know, beyond that, um, uh, I think it's just the um, the breadth of of, uh, of tools that are that are, that is growing uh, mm -hmm. out out there to um, uh, to really um, allow integration with more and more applications. Uh, Work with more and more kinds of workloads. Um, you know, machine learning, um, uh, more uh, SQL type queries. Uh, you name it. Um, uh, and, and 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 really, um, so that when someone comes along and says, "How do I do this?" There is a, a ready answer. Oh, somebody's done that before. Here are the tools they used, um, and getting that know-how out there uh, is, so is what's really happening. Two final question on the, the exit question is um, this next year. Uh -huh. uh, we'll, we'll probably see you at Hadoop Hadoop World uh, in New York, but but between now and, and that event. Um, what's your key goal, and how do you see the Hadoop ecosystem in your preferred future? I mean, how, what is Hadoop ecosystem going to look like? Um, I mean, I, I just see, uh, I see it's really trying to um, fulfill this promise uh, to um, that, that, that we, that's out there. Um, people, people um, have these great expectations, um, and uh, so we need to, we need to meet them. Um, we need to, we need to, to meet the customers, uh, the users. Um, uh, uh, find out what what their um, problems are, how this isn't working for them, and and, and make that happen. Um, uh, you know, we're, we've got the the um, Hadoop 2.0 uh, CDH4 uh, is out in the field. Uh, Cloudera um, released that uh, last week, yep. um, and uh, I think over the the next six months we'll see widespread adoption of that in production, um, uh, and that's very exciting. Do you see HBase exploding. The HBase is going to continue to explode. I think I think the um, the 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 uh, 2.0 stuff really um, helps HBase a lot. There's a whole lot of performance work that went into HGFS um, and MapReduce uh, that we'll see the benefit of. Um, yeah, HBase is just incredible. Uh, yeah. It's 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 taken off, um, and and it's we'll fun see to more watch. Of that, so.
Yeah. Well, Same thanks time. for all your help on theCUBE. You've been a great citizen. You've been great to come on. We love having you on. Uh, <laughs> we knew you when, <laughs> uh, back in the day. And also, Cloudera has been a great supporter of, of my mission at SiliconANGLE, and uh, Mike Olson and Amr have enabled that, and you guys have been very good on that, so I want to thank you for that. Doug Cutting on theCUBE, we'll be right back with more interviews after this short break. <laughs>